From the studios of Staten Island Community Television, you're watching In the Bleachers, the TV show for the world's most passionate sports fans. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Hickson. And this, by... is Hector, this is Hector Bosa at Philadelphia because I had two women take me next to the Super Bowl. Oh, brother. And boy, did I have some fine playing touch tackle. You are such a little liar. You know that? Why don't you just stop? Ah, I mean, seriously, get JJ, over yourself. You should stop. No, you, you need to stop you lying. Stop. You, you need like to stop lying. You're like good times. You're like good times to me. You're JJ, you know why? Because it's jealous Jamie. I'm telling you, you're doing this to yourself. You're you're making you're digging yourself a deeper hole than you already are for for oh, exposing yourself for to be the liar holes. that you are. I'm not too deep, but I'm looking for them holes. Yeah, damn right. You're an idiot. <laughs> Anyway, Hector uh, like was a little under the weather today, well, so he's talk. joining us on the phone. Let's Thankfully, talk about this the time game for the moment, the, the game. How did you enjoy the game? Did well, the, were the bets covered? You know, the game itself Prince was a tremendous game. I thought both teams played hard. Neither team gave an inch, especially offensively. If they if the fans that were watching liked seeing a lot of points on the scoreboard, then they got their money's worth because there were a combined 74 points, almost 1,200 yards of offense, which, by the way, is not just a, a playoff record. It's a Super Bowl record. And there are actually a few things that you can take out of this game. Number one, win or lose – Tom Brady is a boss. Number one, he got 500 yards passing by himself yesterday. And number two, he now has 10,000 yards passing in the playoffs lifetime. He's now the first quarterback to ever throw for 10,000 yards in the playoffs for his career. There are other and quarterbacks who don't even throw 10,000 yards for their career in the regular season, much less the playoffs. And Tom Brady showed 40 years of age or even 30 years of – he could be 50 years of age for all I care. He is still at the top of his game. And all this talk about what his future lies, Tom Brady's coming back next year. There's, there's a guarantee he's coming back next year. Besides, he's, well, he's he, not going he to take uh, losing last night's game lying down. He, he wants a shot at a sixth title. He has to come back, first and foremost, he, for the simple reason that they traded the two of the quarterbacks. Yeah. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing is, I've always said that if you can keep yourself in damn good condition, just like Charlie Huff used to say, I keep my legs and, my legs and hips in the best condition so that I can throw my knuckleball. Mm-hmm. I remember so when Tom Brady to first. Uh, I remember when Tom Brady f first went to the combine for the NFL, almost two decades ago. He looked like somebody who could maybe mow your lawn during the summer. He looked like he looked like he had a teenager's body. All it took was maybe five or ten five or ten years of really good conditioning work, and a terrific work ethic, like. Like he, like he has to get himself in football shape. 40 years of age, and he's still in tremendous shape. It's just a testament to the type of worker he is. You know, people look at age instead of just looking at what the man can do. You know, that, that's, a, that's the thing. That, 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 that's racism within itself because ageism has nothing to do with what's happening. If the guy can move at 40 years old, He's an astonishment because he's, he's a piece of work because he's a football player who's 40 years old, and there aren't that many 40-year-old football players in the league. Not even. In the league. Who is the last football player that's 40 that's in the league? 
Well, many years ago, George Blanda, who played in the AFL and the NFL, he lasted until his late 40s and early 50s. Yeah, but look how far that goes. This is what I'm getting at. By the time you hit 35, they're already gone because their knees are shot. Mm Mm-hmm. And there isn't a love for the game anymore. People are retiring early now. Yeah. So that they can play with their kids. So that they can play with their kids and everything else that they can do. You know, it's funny that you mention retirement because now there are rumors about Rob Gronkowski and where his future holds. Well, you already know where he's going. Well, Jinder Mahal trolled him. Yeah, Jinder Mahal uh, called him out on Twitter yesterday. Don't be surprised if you see Rob Gronkowski go back into the ring. Supposedly, there might be a, a place for him in WWE as a heel. You know, with his, with his buddy, uh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Uh, Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder. Uh, what is it, JoJo? or? I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know who I'm talking mm-hmm. about. I'm just surprised I forgot. Yep. That uh, you know him, them two being heels of faces, mm-hmm. them having the football attitude era. I mean, you know, you have already two ex football players, a major league football players, mm-hmm. and you know, you had minor league football players as we were talking before. Uh, before this big screw-up that we were supposed to be on, but somehow or another some other show was on, and we were talking about this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we were talking about major league football players that have made it to the WWE or have made significant in college. Yeah, there, you know, there's been a long college. list of them. Uh, Stan Hansen. Yep, Stan the Larry uh, Hansen, Wahoo McDaniel. McDaniel at least won a championship. He's the only one that I can think of. He's one of the very few, I should say, that, that that's won a championship ring. Mm-hmm. Besides uh, the Wolf now. He's called the Lone Wolf on, on SmackDown. Yep. I forgot his name. But he's another one. That actually has made it mm-hmm. in the game, and um, that's all there is to it. You, you got like like I said before, the Rock played in the Canadian Football League. Yeah, and before that, the University of Miami, and he had good company. Mm-hmm. He had very good company. Dusty Rhodes played. A lot of wrestlers did yep. play. Stone football. Cold, the Von Erics, John Cena, Ron Simmons played at Florida State, Goldberg played for the University of Georgia, dabbled a little bit with the Falcons. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you have... Even you know, now, Roman know. Reigns played for Georgia Tech. Look at that. And I'm, I'm sure there are others. Yep. That have played other, uh, such as, uh, I think, uh, Francisco Okada. I'm pronouncing his first name wrong. But Okada is a runner at New Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And you had, uh, is it Carl Anderson? Yes, Carl Anderson Mm -hmm. uh, played baseball, macho, macho man. Also Macho played. Man was in the uh, the Cardinals and I think the Red System many years ago. So they all played some type of game. There were two or three poor game, you know. Mm-hmm. The Letterman's, I should say. But it's a tough call. I mean, the one thing that I got out of the football game together was that blown kick. From the the snap to the center. Yeah, that, that le- was a big mistake. That leads to uh, some special teams mistakes on both sides. There was a missed extra point by the Eagles. There were four points that were butchered by the Patriots yesterday. But I, as it turns out, that was just a little bit of a of a side note to the game. The big story in this game 
was the Eagles being a lot more aggressive offensively than the Patriots were, specifically doing a trick play in which Nick Foles, who, by the way, was the MVP of last night's game, faked doing an audible, and as it turns out, he wound up catching a touchdown on a receiver option. Fake double reverse. Fake the double reverse, and and Foles wound up catching a touchdown in the end zone. Then there was the fourth down play where the Eagles wound up throwing it into the end zone, and they wound up getting the lead back. I mean, it's it's just a testament to the type of courageous play calling that Doug Peterson had. And how about the career that Doug Peterson has had in this game? He went from being an afterthought coming out of Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette to being Brett Favre's backup on the Packers. A lot of people don't know this. This is Doug Peterson's second championship that he's won in the NFL. He's now won two Super Bowl titles. The first was as Brett Favre's backup on the Packers when they beat the Patriots over 30 years ago. Yeah, and also the the quarterback for them was the second stringer. He said he wasn't going to come back. they, They brought him out of retirement. Drafted out, drafted in the third round. Uh, he w- he actually went to the same high school as another Super Bowl winner, Drew Brees, Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. Started his college career at Michigan State. Got almost no playing time. Transferred to Arizona. Raised his profile a little bit enough where the Eagles drafted him in 2012. This is his second tour of duty with the Eagles because in between. He had cups of coffee with the Rams and the Chiefs. It was after he got cut by the Rams where he decided he didn't really know what to do with the rest of his life. So he spent some time with his brother-in-law and um, him being the really religious man that he is, he, went, he decided to give it one last shot. So he decided to work for Andy Reid with the Chiefs last season, and then the Eagles gave him one more shot as uh, Carson Wentz's backup, and as it turns out, it was the best thing that the Eagles did because Carson Wentz blew out his knee, and Foles was spectacular for them in the playoffs. Hey, yeah, now what do you do? Do you bring him back as your starting quarterback next year, or do you go, okay, you're our second stringer because you don't know what Carson is going to be like? That raises a really interesting question. There's suddenly a contra- a contra- a quarterback controversy that the Eagles have. They don't want to admit it, but there's a real controversy going on. Do they go with their future, which, which is Carson Wentz, or do they go with the guy that won them the title this year, which is Nick Foles? Tell you what, Nick Foles has showed he can really play this game, and he's a free agent, so... He could probably do anything that he wants now that free agency is going to be coming up next month. So somebody's going to be offering him an opportunity to uh, not only make a lot of money, but get a really great chance to start somewhere. But do you think he'll be a starter again, or do you think he'll be another backup quarterback? Because remember, when Carson comes back, you know how his knee is going to turn out to be. Mm -hmm. Because a blown knee is a very, it's a bad thing to have, as we all know. Yeah. And sometimes it can mess with a person's mobility. It depends on how his his rehab goes. If If Wentz works diligently in his rehab and he's able to do the cutting that he needs to do on the field, and his knee gets stronger, the Eagles might want to bring him back and make him the starter just like uh, he was for the first couple of years. Now, with that being said, who is going to be there to oversee him next season? Nobody knows. Nope. So there's a lot of free agents on there. But I wanted to ask you something. Mm-hmm. And that is, I thought they almost lost it because they were trying to get for the extra punt, the two-point conversion. Yeah, they, they left at least 
five points on the field. One, because they butchered the, an extra point on their first touchdown. And two, when they uh, misfired on those couple of two-point conversions after their last couple of touchdowns. This is why I'm a little leery about the two-point conversion, going for it so early in the game. They had plenty of time to kick it instead of either run or pass. But these are the, I mean, no one know, no one can predict the outcome of a game. So that's why the coaches decide to go for two so early in the game. I mean, in, in, but the thing is, it was late in the game. Was it late in the game? Was it the second or third quarter that they tried for that two-point conversion? It was in the second half. It was in the second half. And you're going, you're going against the best team in the league. Mm-hmm. Do you try something like that, or do you play it safe? For me, I would have just go. I, I would have just kicked the extra point. There was way too much time left. So, what else you want to talk about? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um. As far as last night's game goes, there's something else that needs to be taken out of this game. On the Patriots' side, number one, Malcolm Butler only played special teams. He was not used on any plays defensively last night. And I saw Bill Belichick's press conference on YouTube, on the NFL's uh, YouTube page, he said that there was no disciplinary reason used on Malcolm Butler, yet he never played one single defensive snap last night. Something's got to well, give. He must have done something really diabolical in order to not be allowed to play any defense last night. There's going to be a lot of coaches from, of course, the pack, uh, the, the team that Brady's on that the coaches are going to leave. Yeah, and Matt Patricia's think, going to Detroit, and Josh McDaniels is going to Indianapolis. And and the funny thing is, just because they're on the Bill Belichick, and they think, oh yeah, well they, he's been under his system. They're going to do he, they're going to do exactly what he did. Do you know how many failures have come out of that system? Quite a few. Bill Belichick. Yep. Although in McDaniels' case, he didn't really get a fair shake from Denver. I think he should have been given. A little bit more time to try and work things over, but it, he was really fortunate to make his way back to New England and call the plays under Coach Belichick. Yeah, but this, but still, you've had a lot of players, or should I say a lot of uh, coaches. Oh, he's under Bill Belichick. Oh, he's going to do fine. Oh, he's going to bring the same system as him, as he will, and he's going to disappoint. And wind up doing not a damn thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see what these guys can do this time. Because Matt Patricia is taking over in a notoriously underachieving Lions squad. McDaniels is going to Indianapolis. Where hopefully his quarterback will be available for 16 games. And the Colts can be competitive again. You take away Andrew yeah. Luck. The Colts are nothing. Literally. Well, that's one thing. How we, how how uh, the Eagles are going to look for next year? How is everybody going to look for next year? All the teams from beginning to last. Mm -hmm. How are they going to look? You know, Eli's Manning given his blessing to go out for to get another quarterback. Yeah, you know, you're getting up there in age, but the guy that that's going to be his backup. The one good thing is that he doesn't get hurt, just like Brady. Yeah. That's you know, one that's thing the that the Giants thing. have been fortunate with when it comes to Manning. Except for right. the one time he was benched, he's played every single snap. And he probably yeah. has had a couple of maladies here and there, but he's been so durable and so effective for so long for that franchise, it would look really strange seeing somebody else taking the snaps from center on that giant well, squad. I, I tell you something, people won't, are not going to mind if you were a winner. You know, he's been proven to be a winner. And in people's eyes, 
right now he will always be a winner because he beat Tom Brady. I mean, that, that, I forget winning the NFL, the Super Bowl. Now it's beat, beating Tom Brady. You know, beating, you beating Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. That, that's your plateau. If you can beat them, you're the best team in the league. Mm-hmm. And I, and, but they seem to do a lot of good things that the Astros do, the baseball team, the Astros. Mm-hmm. They do, they, they, for some reason, and the Cardinals. Yeah. And which is they used to rely on their farm system immensely. Mm-hmm. And they were great. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, Brady and Belichick and whoever is on that team that picks these guys to be on that team. Remember, like I said before, if the Knicks had two or three good players, people would want to play on that team. People want to play for Brady and Belichick and so on. Because they know they, they have a system that's going to win. Although, from what I understand, a lot of the Patriots are a little sour on, uh, on Belichick because of because for one he is blunt with his players he never minces words he'll literally call a player out if they're not doing well either on the field or in the locker room or in the in the film room that's number one number two I, I now I, I just got word from uh, one of my sports apps about the real reason Malcolm Butler didn't play on defense yesterday. Turns out he was sick all week. And also, he did not practice well. And he violated a team rule. Okay, I understand because he was sick. But because he violated a team rule and you're trying to go for the Super Bowl. So you're trying to say, I don't need you. You know what? Whatever works for Belichick. Works for him. He's won six Super Bowls. He's gotten there ten times. He, can you? I mean, we're living in the Me Too era and in the PC era. Yeah. Where we can't even sneeze at someone or say, hey, hey, girl, your hair is nice before you get fired. Mm-hmm. You know? And it, this is the PT era and the Me Too era are getting too damn ridiculous. I am all for it to some degree, but I am against it to some degree too, because mm-hmm. you have people that want their 15 minutes of fame, and you know they're they're going for the money, for the power, for whatever they get out of it, and so you know you. And they and they screwed up for the real people that need them, you know, the real victims. Mm-hmm. And you got people that are, you know, if you're a man, you want to be talked like a man. You don't want to be called out sometimes. Sometimes I understand you call out a player just to embarrass them. But if it's a something essential, you don't do it every time. Because if it doesn't work the first two times, why do it a third or fourth time thinking it's going to work? <laughs> You wouldn't believe how many times Bill Belichick has called out Tom Brady in the locker room and in the in the video room. I mean, he even went so far as to say the guy, the, 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 the quarterback on the local high school football team could have made a better throw than you. Yeah, but here's the thing. Does it work? Does Belichick, does the way Belichick coach work? Or is it Brady that's going, you know what, screw you. You can't tell me what to do. I'm going to run the offense, and I'm going to get you to the promised land. It's produced five titles. It? Is it one or So both? obviously something's working. But I think this act might be wearing thin on a few players, though. What and was that? just for the record, Malcolm Butler is going to be a free agent, too. So maybe he could be on his way out. You, you never know. You never know. And Tom Brady made it clear he's coming back next year. He said that in, in the press conference last night. I mean, put it this way. Where would he go? Where would he go? I, I, Someplace I mean, that's where, in where desperate would, need of a quarterback. That's where he, he would go. He, yeah, yeah, but re- remember something. He's got to go to a team that's already made to win a championship. 
Mm-hmm. So which football team out there right now would go and say, all right, we can use a Tom Brady? Hmm. I... That's already made. That's already made to win the Super Bowl. I know a place. Jacksonville. Where? Jacksonville was r- this close. They were this close to beating Brady last month. And they already made it clear that Blake Bortles is going to be their quarterback next year. If the Jaguars had a better quarterback, at least a, a B-plus quarterback, they go to the Super Bowl. Blake Bortles is a C-minus kid at best. You can't win a Super Bowl with a C-minus quarterback. You need at least a B-plus, A-minus quarterback to at least play in a Super Bowl. But considering Brady's age and the fact that he's a Patriot for life, he will only play for the Patriots. Yeah, I know he'll, he'll only play for the Patriots because that's the way the system, the system stands. Mm-hmm. That, that's the way that the system stands. But what I'm getting at is, you know, Jacksonville would be the only place that he would go to. There are a few places where he would probably go. I mean, Jacksonville he first. He can go anywhere in the world. It's just that would they win? Denver also. Denver's another place. Denver is a team that uh, is in need of a quarterback. In fact, Denver True. probably makes a lot of sense because you put him on there, he could not only uh, take over the show, but he's got a really great running game that he would work with where he could take the Broncos to the next level. But, uh, again, are they made to win? Is Denver made, sure made to win they, now? Sure no. To Is win? Jacksonville made to win now? Yes. That's the thing. That's, you know, that's like LeBron James wanting to move to a team that knows that's going to win. He doesn't want to go to a building team. He wants to go to a team that's already a winner. Yep. And after if 15 you're, years, you're the fire's open, still burning for that man. He's won three titles, but he wants a fourth ring. Yeah, you know what? I try to win as much as I can to be the best player in the league. So true. Now, did you uh, check happen to check out any of the commercials in last night's game? Yeah. Well, if I can um, have a little laugh for a moment. Yeah. Easily. Laugh, laugh away. Yeah. There were two commercials that stood out in my eyes. Oh, yeah, the best commercials. Actually, three. Oh, Super Bowl commercials. Oh, dear God. We, didn't, we, never, we never even stopped hearing about those guys. Eli Manning. That was hysterical. Sorry, but seeing Eli Manning and Odell Beckham Jr. dance to time of my life was so hilarious and so classically, unbelievably funny. I couldn't help but just stare at that at that spot in amazement. But there yeah, were other commercials I, that I saw as well. Yeah, the Morgan Freeman one. Oh, that was that was brilliant. Morgan Freeman for Mountain Dew and Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones for Doritos. Yeah, they, classic they, commercial. Buster Rhymes and Missy Elliott. Yep, the hit. Oh, uh, what about the Tide commercial, where they were basically making fun of Super Bowl commercials? That, and also the, they used the guy from, uh, oh, the, the program from the Netflix. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. The, the actor from the Stranger, Stranger Things, Things was the Things. one that did that Tide commercial. Yeah, and he did an immense an amount of them, too. It yep. wasn't just one or two. It was like four or five of them. 
as if he and didn't raise his profile that. any higher than it already has. He's already starring in a hot, hot Netflix show. Something tells me he's going to be really in demand after this commercial he did. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think that a commercial can blow you up, but I could imagine the, the standings for the betting. Oh, yes. They were betting to see if, if Tim Blake would sing a Prince song and would he sing uh, When Doves Cry, I think. Well, as it turns out, he, he did do he a Prince tribute, I which I thought was you. very classy. Yeah, but he wound up singing I Would Die For You, so I don't know what the over and under is or whatever the betting system was. They were betting on the Gatorade, on, you know, which coach. They also bet on Belichick's sweater. What sweater does he use? It's ridiculous the way... People are betting the way Tim Blake was, was I think it was from uh, Backstreet Boys. They were betting close. on to see if, if, if You're from they Inc- were. The, close. He, he in, was with NSYNC. NSYNC. They were betting on to see if, if some of his NSYNC buddies would come on. They were betting to see if Janet Jackson would come on. No, nope. he did this all by and his own. Be- and I can't believe they're still talking about the two-second nipple showing that you couldn't barely see. And I didn't know nipple kill. <laughs> but I'm Johnny Jackson blew up the place with that two, not even two-second thing. But, oh, dear God, you know, I'm telling you, we're sexually repressed in, this, in the United States. But, dear God. You want to <laughs> you wanna know something really outrageous? Just a month or two after that incident, Justin Timberlake was invited to the Grammy Awards. Janet Jackson was completely ostracized. Didn't even so much as get a phone call. And look at that. It wasn't her, it wasn't her fault. It was his because he was the one that ripped it off. It, it just goes to show you that political... in incorrectness or political correctness is just going a little bit too far. Not just in sports and in entertainment, but in society in general. Yeah, you know, but you know, talking about February 8th coming about the NBA. Yeah, the training deadline, they they changed the date of the training deadline. It was, I think, the 23rd or the 17th. Now it's been moved up to the 8th. Now, why'd they do that? They wanted, I think the reason for that is because they wanted to make sure that everything was done a little bit closer, a little bit further back from the trading deadline, as opposed to being so close to the trading deadline. Well, Tom Baker's out for the season. Mm Mm-hmm. And I just found out the Nets wound up making a trade of their own. Tyler Zeller got traded to to, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. For what did they get? They got um, a seldom-used guard named Rashad Vaughn, who only played 22 games with the team this year. Now, is his contract up next year, or is he a good guy? Rashad Vaughn didn't really do too much, didn't really get a fair shake, to be honest with you. He was only averaging two points a game. So... Could it be that maybe the Nets want to build their backcourt a little bit by bringing this guy in? We'll see. If anything, I think this is more a a testament to the Bucs wanting to win now by going with more height than the Nets are with uh, building their backcourt. Well, you got Billy and then Gomez wanting out. Yeah, he officially demanded a trade. But I'm going, if you're going to trade anybody, you might as well get rid of Kyle O'Quinn because he's leaving next year. He's not coming back. Yeah, so I think he's going to be a free agent this summer, isn't he? He's a, he's opting out of his contract next year. They know that he's opting out of his contract next year. And, you know, I know Pozingas wants to win this year, but even if you get to the first round, I don't know how you're going to make it to the second round. Okay, I hate to tell you this, that's, Hector, that's but don't don't bet on yeah, any I, playoff hopes for them this year. 
like or next said, year for that matter. Like, but like I said, if they did make it to the playoffs, because you have always been the catalyst of all of them saying, oh, they'll never make the playoffs, and they have, I'm quoting is that even if they did make the playoffs, let's first round of the playoffs, they wouldn't, I don't think they'd go to the second round, plain and simple. I don't think they're even going to make it this year. There's no Why? chance do, do they in have hell a, they have of them shot? getting out of the first round. I mean, do they have a shot. There's always a shot. Depending upon and right now, the play. Knicks would play the Celtics in the first round, and the Celtics would squash exactly. them. Exactly. Like I said, it'd be a miracle if they make the first round, if they make it past the first round. Now, should they give? Should they keep Bully Hendon Gomez? Hornacek either has it in for him. It's or not that he has it in for him. It's that Hernan Gomez is a horrible defender. He needs defenders on the floor, and Hernan Gomez has not endeared himself to Hornacek right. because he can't defend. Yeah, but you have to remember, again, in order for you to get better, you have to be on the court. You just can't do it. In the practice game. Play well, when he has been on the court, he, he's regressed. And No, actually, he's done well and he's worked hard and so on. Not really. That's Not on the I, defensive that's end. That's what I've been reading. That's what I've been reading now. All the reports that I've been reading is that he's been doing well. His defense is still slacking, but he's like in his cancer. At his least in his cancer puts forth the effort. He bet so does so does Hendon Gomez. But again, you have to play the young guys in order to see if they're worth having or not. He was in the all rookie team last year. And Hector, that was last year, man. That, yeah, you're gonna poo poo. Oh, so that means if if CC Sabathia wins the Star Young Award, oh, forget him. He's not good anymore. He's not going to win. Oh, Dude, no. you're comparing oh, apples and oranges series. here. Yeah, uh, it's, to again. it's two totally different sports. Uh, but you're poo-pooing that he did accomplish something. And you can't poo-poo that. You have to give him the benefit of the doubt and go, you know what? Just because he it, made it, some all-rookie team doesn't give him going, any more carte blanche this year than he already got last year. But he should get a little more because he did accomplish if something. If he's not defending, he do. doesn't play. End of story. And, again, and, again, and the same can be said Hornacek for a bunch of the it. guys on that How roster. How do you know Hornacek doesn't have it in for him? He's a third string. He's a third string coming off the bench. Hornacek doesn't use him, even when, even when you need to use him. Why do you think Yo Kim Noah is not, is not there no more? I'm telling yes, you, he's it, it not could, defending it, it, well it, it, it at all. Be, it could, it could be because he had an argument with his coach, saying, "Hey, listen, you're saying I'm busting my ass." But you're not playing me even in garbage time, even though he did do something as well. So if a person can't speak up saying, "Why aren't you playing me?" or "You should be playing me more," if I'm the third, if I'm your third stringer, you can't, you know, rotate them because you're betting on your young lion. You're, you're saying that we're going to rebuild on young guys. And he was one of your cornerstones last year. People were talking about that. He's one of our cornerstones. He's one of our young guys that we're going to build around Pozingas and so on and so on and so on. That's what we all talked about last year. Now, all of a sudden, things change that dramatically to the point where he's become, you can't even get him on the court for garbage points. That's just. Are you kidding me? That's the way no, the ball yeah, bounces, ridiculous. Hector. If he doesn't no, perform, he doesn't coach, play. It's either the coach that has it in for him. He's not playing well. All these reports that saying that he's willing to do do what you will, do as much as you can because he's an Enos Cancer. He's got the same game as Enos Cancer. People have been saying that. Yes, he does. I'm not saying he doesn't need to work on his defense. Of course he has to work on his defense. But again, 
People, a lot of teams want him. A lot of teams want him. Now, again, going back to last year, you said, you not you in particular, but people are saying, oh, well, we need him because he's a young guy. Pozingas and him are going to make a great team. Now, all of a sudden, you're going, you know what? Let's just forget about him and let's win now attitude. That's if they get to the point. That's the whole point. Hornacek wants to try, is trying to save his job by getting a decent record out of it. So he's got to protect his rear end by not losing too much, but can't win too much as well. And also you have the fact that you have players there that want to play and they're not getting a chance to play. You got, if you're going to dump the season, you got to play your guy. You got to play your Frank and Nikita. You got to start him. You can't leave him on the bench. You got to start him. You got to start these young dudes because you're not going to know if, if they're worth having around or not. That's a plain and simple fact. Well, it's just, it's just like the Yankees and so forth. They got to bring in the young guys. Will they give them a year or two to, to pan it out? Of course they will. How do you think they became so good? Because they waited, they waited, they waited. Just if you're going to follow the pattern of bringing the young guys, like every other team, like the Indiana Pacers, like the Celtics, and all them other people, all them other great teams, then you're going to have to follow a pattern, plain and simple. Stick with stick with what you have. Stick with the young guys and play them for a year or two, and then decide if they're worth it or not. Or if you can get somebody better than them that's young, then so be it. Because you can't. I mean, you can trade a Lance Thomas and get something worth it. You can get a second rounder, Courtney Lee. You can get a second rounder. You got all these guys, but you know. Then you're gonna leave your your bench with with no veterans that lead the team. I mean, hell, they even think the Lakers are even thinking of trading Levar Ball. <laughs> Already given up on the kid uh, that was their second overall pick last summer. Yeah, that's that was the, that's really sending that was, a message to the fan base. But this is what I'm saying. This is exactly what I'm saying about Hendon Gomez and so on. Yeah, but you can't compare LeVar Ball with Willie Hernan Gomez. That, that, that's, yes, you can. No, not even yes, close. You can. No, yes, you, you can. can't. Not even yes, close, Hector. Come on now. If he made the Levo- Levo- Lonzo Don Ball is on. already so being considered a, a, a future NBA star. Willie Hernan Gomez is somebody who toiled in the, in, in the Euro League. And is basically a third stringer because, for one, he can't play any defense whatsoever if he could, if he, if his life depended on it. And two, he was a little full of himself after making the All Rookie Team last year. I mean, and seriously, there comes a time in every athlete's, every person's life when they need to be humble. You're right. You're, I, Lonzo's I problem agree. is that his I old agree. man is barking up the wrong tree a little too much, if you ask me. I, I agree. Uh, I agree. You know, if you're full of yourself and you have to be humble, that's one thing. And that's what a couple of guys on the, in, in the Knicks front office said, that Hernan Gomez might have been of feeling himself a little too much in training camp. And as it turns out, he, he wound up having a, a, a disappointing training camp and a disappointing preseason, too. And, you know... And it's translated you know, I, in his I've, play. I've known play. I have known players, and there have been players that are horrible in the beginning, and once the game starts, once the real season starts, they become fantastic. They play horrible games in practice. They're horrible, but once the game starts, something clicks in them. You know. Like I said, you, you you had a plan last year. 
and, and your plan was to use him. Now, you had Enos Camper coming in. Okay, fine. He's got an option next year as well as as well as uh, Oak Kyle Quinn. And just so you know, Enos Cantor has outclassed both of the guys that are backing him up right now. All the more reason why Cantor, quite frankly, something needs to be done with him. If they want to move on, they might as well just uh, make him available in a trade for a, with a contender. And if not, bring the guy back, please. At least exactly. he's showing some kind of hustle. I mean, he well, had a 2020 game for crying out loud over the, just over the other night. Well, it, that's that's what I'm saying with all them other guys, all them other new guys that you keep like the next two thousand. Oh, we want to play the young guys so so that we can have a great team, and yet you're leaving. There are some teams that you'll have you, you'll start off with the the idea of starting with. A team, we're going to build, and then all of a sudden that gets lost. Hopefully, they're not getting lost in this trend and this transition. They don't get lost. If if playing the young guys is what there is where they're at, then for God's sake, do what you have to do and play them. Yep. Plain and simple English. Well, lost in this whole thing was the fact that one big, big trade already took place in the league, and that is Blake Griffin going to the Pistons. This he after he signed Twitter. a big contract with them over the summer. Well, they had the other team had the uh, the salary cap that they can do it. You know, if, if, if they were going to trade the guy, why give him a contract extension in the first place? This is what really uh, baffles me about certain sp- professional company. sports front offices. And at the same time, I shouldn't be surprised because you know why? It's the Clippers. They're, they're, they based their franchise history on complete and utter incompetence. Well... Here's the thing too, if you if if they're going to trade him and they're going to trade uh, DeAndre, DeAndre Jordan, if, yeah, and there's still DeAndre Jordan to the, to the Cavaliers class, rumors. You know, you know the teams are going. Of course, the Cavaliers are into it. They want to trade the Nets pick, if possible. Um. You have a lot of things going on. Now, why did the the uh, the Clippers sign him to a, a full contract? Because one, they thought they had something, probably, and two, you know, because sometimes teams like to sign people first and then go. Oh, okay, now that we have them for a couple of years, like they're doing baseball, they don't trade people until they know they're on the contract. Sometimes, hmm. and you know that, and you know that that once they're on the contract, that's when they trade them, and then go, okay, now now that we've traded them, and we're going to pay the salary, the majority of the salary. They go, okay, fine, amazing. We'll take whatever salary and and, and so on. I'll say this though. Blake Griffin is going to a much better situation in Detroit than the one he's in with the Clippers because well he's now, in the East yeah so now that, he's in that, the Eastern Conference him. and that. he he escapes the the drama that was surrounding the Clippers first Chris Paul gets traded now this guy what's next is DeAndre Jordan going to get traded too this only yeah. leads me to believe the Clippers are rebuilding for the future. Well, if they do, and they do it the smart way, but that's another team that's trying to rebuild always and always and always, and they never get to the promised land. And it's because you've got a lot of really good teams in the West. Yeah. And I never understood this. 
why would you go to the West, which is the hardest place to, to be in, instead of going to the East and try to latch on to a team that can get you there? Because there's not too many teams in the East that are, that are great. Two reasons. One, they're trying to get a piece of the Warriors. They're trying to do all they can to beat the Warriors. And two, they realize that all the best teams are in the West. So naturally, they're going to try and defect out West and play for either Houston or San Antonio or Dallas or Oklahoma City. You know, go to the East. The East is the promised land. The West is not the greatest place to be. The East is where it's at because the West is not in that. you got too many damn good players, damn good teams that are going and are laughing because Golden State, the Warriors, they're an institution right now. They're, they're, and the Cavaliers at one point were the kids on the block that you had to beat. Now the Celtics are but they have to accomplish something that the Cavaliers haven't, which is beat the Golden State Warriors, if they make it, because, again, there's a lot of damn good teams out there. There's only one great team in the Eastern Conference right now. That's Boston. There's one very good team in the Eastern Conference right now. That's Toronto. After that, Cleveland has become a major disappointment. Washington's been a disappointment. Milwaukee, I cannot trust to win a playoff series. Giannis Antetokounmpo, quite frankly, needs to get out of Milwaukee. He cannot prosper in Milwaukee anymore. One team, well, actually, two young teams who I would watch out for right now. Actually, three. Indiana, because of Victor Oladipo. Miami, because of their plethora of young players. And Philly, because of a healthy Joel Embiid and a healthy Ben Simmons. After that, take your choice. You know, I'm going, you know, some of these guys would really look good in the next uniform. The question is, do they even want to make the move to the Big Apple? Not only that, but why would they even consider wanting to work in such a toxic atmosphere? It's not toxic. It's a it's toxic, toxic atmosphere, and you it's know it, a- man. It's James Dolan has perpetuated this thing for over anymore. 20 years. Uh, Jamie, when have you heard he stopped, when, when he signed Phil Jackson, right? When he signed Phil Jackson, when was the last time you heard uh, James Dolan's name come up saying, oh, well, James Dolan is sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. When was the last time you heard that? Uh, how about the day Patrick was traded? How about hiring uh, Scott Layden to be the general manager? How about how Isaiah Thomas been? being hired as the general manager? Again, how about how all of those horrendous Again, roster moves? A plethora that, of roster moves that have been made about, that were yeah. completely backwards under his leadership. How you're about the sexual? How, how about the how sex scandal that plagued that franchise for a year and a half? How about the fact that he tried to pick a fight with ago? a fan out in the street and actually had one of his minions follow that fan out in the street because that fan had enough sense to call that idiot out? How you're about right. that? When was the last, what year was that? It's not about when. It's about how no, often. No, it is about when. Because, you know, there are sometimes you have to give, forgive people. There He's are, not getting anything things. from me. He gets you no know, forgiveness yeah, from me. He sure as hell is not going to get any from blessing me, from me. And I, I sure as hell am not going to forget what I'm has not, happened to that I'm sorry franchise. Person. That I, once I proud person. franchise, I which has now gone from being an embarrassment to a right. laughing stock, to being run of the muck. But I look at it this way. Think of it this way. Okay? Besides, because you're biased. 
It's not you're a biased. bias. You're biased. No, you're it is right. not a explain. bias. I just see explain. what's happened with that franchise, and let it me infuriates me. Yes. It infuriates let me, me, let me to see yes. so much incompetence I, I being passed that. on here, from one place to another with that franchise. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The only thing you can get him on is the Charles Oakley fiasco within the That's first That's another six thing. Years. How in the, the world do you ban one of the most beloved within players in franchise history all because this guy saw through the BS that this guy was was trying to spread all over the yep. garden? That's why You're I don't right. go to You're Madison Square Garden anymore. I don't, I don't go to Madison Square the... Garden because of him. I won't even go see St. John's there anymore. But, but here's the thing. If if you want to if you want to stop being so biased for a moment. I'm not and listen, biased. Listen, just listen, what part just of the listen, words I'm listen. not biased do you just not listen. understand? Just listen. Just listen. Just listen for a moment. Stop screaming and stop and, and listen for one moment. Now I'm not the biggest fan of James Dolan, okay? And that's a fact. I'm not the biggest fan, and I'll criticize him just as much as you did because Isaiah Thomas and all them other things that you mentioned are definitely true. You can't deny that. But when he hired Phil Jackson, you didn't hear a peep that he was sticking his nose into anything of that nature. He let Phil Jackson do his thing. He listened to the fans. The fans wanted Phil Jackson. He gave him Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson was a disaster. So what did he do? He fired Phil Jackson. He never should have taken now, the job the in the first thing, place. Now the second thing is, the second thing is, I don't like the fact what he did to Oakley. But is it that much toxic? You don't hear that toxicity anymore like you used to hear in the past. It's you don't still hear not the writers, because the writers, he is wait still a minute, wait a minute. there. The writers, the writers don't speak of him that badly anymore. Nobody speaks to him that badly anymore. Now, if it's happening where nobody's reading about it or hearing about it or writing about it, that's a different story. But also, let's say you want to come to the Knicks. If the East is the best place to be, and you want to go to a place that could actually bring you famous. If you if you win if you win in New York, your name is etched in stone. Plain and simple. People from Cleveland to Hawaii will know that you won a championship for the New York Knicks. That's a that's a fact. If they ever got good players, which I'm hoping they do. They're at, and if they ever do win the championship in within my lifetime, they'll it'll they work their names will be etched in stones and then, like I said, from Staten Island to Hawaii, people will know their names. Even from Italy to Brazil, all the people will know that you won for the New York Knicks. And that's a fact. And also Second thing is because you're playing in the East. And the next division is the weakest division. It's not the hardest, it's the weakest. Because the only people you gotta really worry about is the Celtics. Everybody else is beatable in that division. Unfortunately, Kenny's uh doing the looping sign with his hand, so we have to So take uh, care make our Southwest. exit now. Thank you for everything, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks for everything. Guys, thank you so much for watching at home. That's going to do it for us. For everyone here, I'm Jamie. I'm Hector. I'm going to try and cool off right now. Kenny, yeah, take cool us on off. out of here.